Hi, and welcome to module one of the Introduction to Dask video tutorial. This module is called The Power of Parallel Computing, and we will cover a basic introduction of what parallel computing is and how Dask helps unlock the power of parallel computing for people working with data in Python. Let's start with a bit of an analogy. In this video, you see an Amish community building a barn. Now, you might wonder what this has to do with parallel computing, but if you look closely, you see that there's a lot of workers doing small amounts of work together in parallel to complete a large project. And what this illustrates is exactly the power of doing work, computations, in parallel. And as we'll see later, Dask actually does something quite similar. It takes your big data project, cuts it up into small pieces of work, and distributes that work to be able to execute it in parallel. Or in other words, Dask unlocks the power of parallel computing for PyData users and allows you to process more data in less time. Now, you might be wondering, why do we even need parallel computing? Why should I care? Well, there might be a few different situations in which you might care. In this diagram, you see four quadrants. If you're in the bottom left quadrant, your data size is manageable and your computations are running fast enough. In this case, you don't need Dask. You're fine working with Pandas, NumPy, or whatever other PyData library you like to use. However, if your data size starts to increase, or your computations are running slower than you would like them to, or you're running into both of those problems at the same time, then you should probably give Dask a try. Let's look at a specific example of running into a memory issue with pandas. This code loads a single CSV file, that's about two gigabytes, into a Python session using pandas. This will work fine on my local machine. However, if I try to import the entire data set, which are 12 months of CSV data, it's about 15 or 16 gigabytes of data, pandas will error out with a memory error because my machine does not have the memory resources to load this all into memory. Dask was created to solve exactly this problem and many others. Dask scales PyData libraries like Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-Learn, and XGBoost with parallel computing. Let's imagine the Pandas library as a race car. It's a pretty popular race car. A lot of people use it, and for good reason. It is effective and efficient at crunching data in Python. It is also limited, however. Pandas is great, for relatively small data sets. The general rule of thumb is that your data set should be 20% or less of your available RAM. So what happens when your data set gets bigger? So the team that built Dask saw that people enjoy driving this Pandas race car and saw no good reason to get rid of that race car. But we do have to deal with this limitation on data size. The thinking was, what if we could keep people driving the same car? It's familiar, people know where the steering wheel is, they know how to turn left and right but we plug in a different, bigger engine to deal with the scaling issues. This means we have a familiar look and feel, but no more limits on data size. Let's illustrate this with some code. Here we create a 665 million row data set with Dask and write it to Parquet. If I try to load this data set in with Pandas, I will get a memory error because my machine doesn't have enough RAM to load this in. However, Dask can handle this computation and you can see that with pandas-like syntax, we can perform computations over this data set. So what's happening here? Why is pandas limited and Dask not? Pandas is limited because it processes all of your computations on a single core. That means if you have a computer with four cores, three of them will be sitting idle and will not be used. Dask overcomes this problem by splitting up your data set into small chunks, just like we saw in the Amish barn raising example, and distributing that work over the multiple cores in your machine. This means that all of your cores are now being used and you're able to process the data faster. Dask can do this on a single machine, but with the same code, you can also scale Dask out to multiple machines. This would be called distributed processing. The Pandas race car with a Dask engine is called Dask DataFrame. It looks and feels like Pandas, but it's no longer uh, dealing with the scaling limitations that Pandas has. We'll cover this in more detail in module two. The Dask engine can also plug into the NumPy race car, giving us a Dask array, which looks and feels like NumPy, but no longer has the limitations on data size. We'll cover this in module three. Dask also plugs into scikit-learn 
algorithms to give us Dask ML. Again, the scikit-learn race car, the scikit-learn look and feel, with no more limitations on data size. We'll cover this in Module 4. Module 4 will also cover the Dask and XGBoost integration. And finally, in Module 5, we'll look at taking the Dask engine out and using it by itself. So not plugging it into an existing library, but using sort of the bare bones of the Dask parallel computing engine to parallelize any Python function with Dask delayed. This concludes the first module of the course. We've covered a basic introduction of what parallel computing is and how Dask unlocks that power of parallel computing for PyData users. In the next module, we'll look at how to process tabular data with Dask data frames. I'll see you there.